let's take a look at atomic physics and atomic energy levels. So by the early 20th century, scientists had experimentally found that all matter is made out of atoms. And atoms contain a positive center containing most of its mass and an outer region with a negative charge, which had much less mass in it. And this led, with a lot of other details that we're going to skip over, this led to the Bohr model of the atom, which, put simply, was a nucleus at the center, which contains protons and neutrons, and those protons and neutrons contain most of the mass of the atom. And then, outside, there were these electrons traveling around in these paths. Now, this is a model. It's called the Bohr model. It's not the Bohr reality. Um, so it shouldn't be taken literally. It's a model of the atom, and it works pretty well, uh, it turns out. And we're not going to go over all the experiments that verified this, but they were there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go over a couple weird facts about the atom. These electrons here in the Bohr model, they can only exist in certain orbits. They can't just be in any old orbit. There's only certain orbits which are allowed. And each orbit of the electron corresponds to a certain energy. So, for example, in a hydrogen atom, and hydrogen is nice and simple to think about because it just has one proton at the center and one electron floating around on the outside, and maybe there's a couple neutrons involved, but we can ignore them for now. But in a hydrogen atom, the allowed energy levels for the electron are these. And I'm going to write down the energy levels as being, or they're sort of named 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and they go all the way up. The that corresponds to each energy level is known, and it's fixed. That corresponds to negative 13.6 electron volts. Now, electron volt, oh, let's worry about that in a moment. But energy level 2, that corresponds to an energy of negative 3.9 electron volts. 3 is negative 1.5 electron volts. 4, negative 0 0.85 electron volts, and so on and so on. And when you get to the energy level infinity, it turns out the energy of that electron is zero electron volts. So let's take this apart. So first of all, I want to emphasize, these energy levels are the only allowed energy levels, or only allowed levels for an electron in a hydrogen atom. The electron cannot have any other energy and be part of this atom. It's simply not allowed. Now, the first energy level, this one with the energy of negative 13.6 electron volts, that first energy level is called the ground state. And it corresponds to the point where, or the orbit, where the electron is closest to the nucleus. And you see, that's when the electron has the least amount of energy. It's the biggest negative number, so it's a least amount of energy. The higher energy levels, these are called excited states. And they always have more energy than the ground state. And when you go up and up and up and up to a higher, higher and higher energy levels, and eventually you get to the infinity energy level, then it reaches an energy of zero electron volts. And what that means is at that moment, when it reaches zero energy, the electron has escaped the atom. It's no longer part of the atom. It's in a really, really infinitely far away orbit, which means it's not at all in the atom. And when that happens, the electron has escaped, and we say that the atom is ionized. It has lost an electron. Now there's another common way to represent these energy levels, and that's like this. You draw a little set of axes, and the vertical axis is just the energy of the electron. And you can see we have the ground state here. It's at the bottom, because that's the least amount of energy. And then there's n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3 and all the way up to n equals infinity when it's ionized. So this is a common way to represent the energy levels. Also, I want you to keep in mind that the numbers that I've drawn here, or written here, are all for hydrogen. I've used hydrogen as an example. If I were to write these down for helium, which has two protons and two electrons, well, the numbers would be different. And they would also be different for lithium, or beryllium, or lead, or iron, or uranium. Every element has very unique 
energy levels possible for the electrons. I've just written down the ones for hydrogen. They'd be completely different for every other element. Now, the idea that these electrons um, can only exist in specific energy levels, that's called quantization. Or we say that the energy levels, the electron energy levels, are quantized. They can only have very specific values, and they are not allowed to have other values. That's called quantization. Also, just as I said, every element has its own electron energy levels. Hydrogens, we saw. Helium is different. Every other element is different. Okay, now the electron has to be able to get to these energy levels, so how does that work? Well, in order to go back and forth between energy levels, it either has to gain energy or lose energy. And that energy that's lost or gained by the electron is like a little packet. We think of it as a little, like, bundle of energy, and it's called a quantum of energy. And a quantum of energy is also called a photon. So let's imagine that we have an electron in the ground state, like this, and let's say a bundle or packet or quantum of energy, a photon, comes in and gets absorbed by the electron. Well, if the electron absorbs a little packet of energy, that means the electron is going to gain energy. And so if it gains just the right amount of energy, it can jump up to a higher level. Now, if it's at a higher level, and the electron then spits out a photon, a little packet, a little bundle, a little quantum of energy, then it can jump down to a lower energy level. Now, it turns out, I'm not going to explain why, but it turns out that the energy of a photon is given by this equation. E equals H times F. E in this equation represents the energy of the photon. H is a constant, it's called Planck's constant. It's called, well, it's equal to 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And F is the frequency of the photon in Hertz. So what exactly is this photon thing? Well, it's a packet of energy, also called a quantum of energy. And we're gonna think of it right now as being made of light or being made of electromagnetic waves. Uh, with a frequency that's given by this equation, E equals HF. That's how you relate the energy to the frequency. So if we look at that equation, E equals HF, we can see that a higher energy photon would have a higher frequency wave associated with it. A high frequency photon will contain more energy than a low frequency photon. All right. So if we had a big number of hydrogen atoms, like a big cloud of hydrogen gas, and all of their electrons are in excited states, then those electrons, they could jump down to lower states, right? But they could only jump down to the allowed states. And each time a photon jumps down to a state, then it would emit a photon of some amount of energy, okay? And if it's emitting a photon of a set amount of energy, that means it's also emitting a photon with a set frequency. So when we think about electromagnetic waves and frequencies, remember, if it's visible light, frequency of an electromagnetic wave corresponds to a color. So a high-frequency photon or a high-frequency electromagnetic wave corresponds to a bluer color, and a lower frequency photon corresponds to a redder color. And it turns out that for hydrogen, if you look at the energy levels, hydrogen emits three colors. It emits a reddish color, a bluish color, and a purplish color. That reddish color, that corresponds to a certain frequency and a certain photon energy where that's caused by an electron jumping from the n equals 3 level to the n equals 2 level. The bluer one, that's from n equals 4 to n equals 2. And then the purplish one, that's from n equals 5 to n equals 2. Now, there are absolutely frequencies associated with, say, n equals 6 to n equals 2. But it turns out that that's a higher frequency, and that's a frequency that's so high that we can't see it 
Turns out that photon is associated with the uni uh, ultraviolet light. So we can't see that. Now, these colors and frequencies that are emitted by hydrogen, that's called its emission spectrum. That's hydrogen's emission spectrum. Every element has unique energy levels, and therefore it has a unique emission spectrum. It's kind of like the element's fingerprint. Every element emits very specific frequencies because it has its own allowed energy levels, and so it emits very specific colors. You can identify what element you're looking at by looking at the frequencies that are emitted by it, and that'll tell you what energy levels are present, which tells you what element it is. Now, if we had a huge number of hydrogen atoms in the ground state, let's say, and then we send in a bunch of photons, all with very different frequencies associated with them, then only the photons that have just the right energy to get the electron to jump up to the allowed energy levels, only very specific photons will be absorbed. All the other ones will just pass through. They don't have the right energies to cause the electrons to jump up. So only the colors and frequencies corresponding to the jumps to the excited states would be absorbed. The other photons would just pass right on through. So this would kind of leave you with the opposite of an emission spectrum. It would call, give you what's called an absorption spectrum. You would see all of these colors and frequencies of photons passing through, except for the ones that were absorbed. And the ones that were absorbed correspond to those specific energies and specific frequencies which allow the electrons to jump up to those higher levels. So in the absorption spectrum, all frequencies and colors are seen except those which were absorbed by the element.